So the fitness industry is funny, and it's not always funny, ha ha. Especially lately, but that's a whole separate thing. So frequently I will see uh, people in this industry make two statements that inherently contradict one another, and they will not even realize that this is the case. And today, specifically, I'm going to examine the following two statements, which are, number one, you must squat to get big, followed by number two, what's up with all these guys with great big upper bodies who never train legs? And people will say those often in the same breath and not realize that they completely contradict one another, because it's one or the other. I don't really want to talk about that so much as this idea that's been floating around for well, probably decades at this point, that the squat is either beneficial or even mandatory to get big. And this has truly been around for decades, right? You can go find older articles and they'll talk about how the squat, or as they used to call it, the deep knee bend, you know, is responsible for putting more muscle on trainees than any other exercise and, and things of that nature. And this, this belief persists to this day. And I think in, in the most general sense, the idea of this came that, that squats and sometimes deadlifts had sort of this systemic growth response, that it would stimulate growth generally in the body. I don't know that anybody really had thought about what that meant, but you, you would see that every once in a while. And then sometime around the 80s, I would say that kind of got uh, codified in the sense of a mechanism was proposed that I'm going to describe and then explain uh, that I think it's, it's basically been four decades of a red herring that has caused a lot of dumb ideas. And that's due to the hormonal response to squatting. Now, what kind of brought this back to mind uh, is a recent thread in my Facebook group. So a bunch of years ago, I read an article, wrote an article, talking, comparing leg presses and squats for building big legs, just for hypertrophy. And I pointed out there are many people, the squat is a, a losing proposition exercise in terms of building big legs. People with certain mechanics, generally long femurs, um, end up so tipped over when they squat that it is just flatly a shitty exercise for their legs. Their low back gives out. And in that case, finding movements to take the low back out of the equation works a lot better, and the leg press can fulfill that need. And let's just say this article didn't go over well, because everyone on the internet knows that squats rule and machines drool, bro. And I'll address the squat thing in more detail in a separate video I'm going to do, another, another dumb shit fitness professional say, but that's a separate video. Someone in my group asked about this, and someone in the comments section, as always is the case, said, well, the reason squats are superior is the hormonal response. Because this idea has been around for decades, that the hormonal response to squats or certain exercises or certain loading parameters is critical for growth. So let's talk about that. This came around in the mid to late 80s. Uh, I'd say William Kramer was really the one driving the bus on this, and it has stimulated decades of research that is just ultimately irrelevant, as I, I intend to show you. Now, they sort of started from what I think is a little bit of a non sequitur uh, in the sense of the researchers went, okay, bodybuilders are bigger than powerlifters, muscularly bigger, which we might debate in the first place, but just go with this. I said, ergo, there must be something about the training that is causing this. Ergo, having drawn that conclusion, Let's now go determine why our conclusion is correct. And this isn't really a good way to do science. You don't start with a conclusion and work backwards. Regardless, they looked at the, the, the typical training of the day. Uh, High-level bodybuilders, pros, would typically do higher repetitions on short rest intervals. So still kind of a leftover of the Arnold days. That was how you trained. Powerlifters, in contrast, were doing lower repetitions with long rest intervals which is still how they mostly train. So they decided, okay, well, let's compare, you know, what we would consider a powerlifter workout to a bodybuilder workout and look at what happened. And they happened to be looking at hormonal response. And what they showed was that the power training, which was typically like three sets of five rep max with a three-minute rest, versus the bodybuilding training, which was like three sets of a 10 rep max with a 60-second rest, 
generated distinct hormonal responses. Specifically, the sets of five on three minutes tended to cause an increase in testosterone, and the sets of 10 on one minute tend to cause an increase in growth hormone. Aha, there's a difference. We have a reason. Now, already they were on the wrong path because in and of itself, growth hormone is really irrelevant to muscle growth. Even injectable growth hormone by itself doesn't do much. And certainly that that hormonal response to that type of training did even less. Whereas we know that testosterone is extremely anabolic, right? Anabolic steroids, testosterone derivatives, testosterone uh, compounds build muscle without training. Growth hormone builds connective tissue. Great for fat loss, great for joint health, shitty for muscle growth, unless you stack it with other stuff. So already they'd gone down the wrong path. If their, if their premise was that bodybuilders are bigger than powerlifters, they should have realized that the hormonal response to bodybuilding training is not worth jack shit for growth, whereas the hormone response to powerlifting is. But they didn't. Okay, so... Uh, they did a zillion research studies on this, different parameters kind of within that, and they found that different exercises had different response. And typically it was the big movements, you know, squat, pinch, deadlift, or heavy reps that had uh, caused a bigger testosterone response and, you know, yada, 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 yada. Like, again, a zillion studies. And they all sort of supported that. Um, let me make another point on the growth hormone thing. Women produce more growth hormone than men. Their, their resting levels are higher and they produce more in response to training. Do women grow better? No. So this idea, like I said, they were already down the wrong path. The growth hormone response to bodybuilding training was irrelevant. So if you're starting from the premise that bodybuilders are bigger and the hormone response can't be driving it, you might as well stop. And yet they haven't. There's still studies being done on this. So, um... As a quick aside, this is like over a decade ago, uh, an early Usenet group, something most of you are too young to even know what it is. And when I was pointing out that this hormone response to training was basically irrelevant, someone asked me the brilliant question. I said, if anabolic steroids work so well, why is this increase in testosterone from training so irrelevant? Which is really dumb as shit. Because the answer is simple. Anabolic steroids raise testosterone to extremely high levels, depending on how much you take, obviously. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It is a chronic, super physiological stimulus. This is not the same as raising testosterone by like 10% for 15 or 30 minutes. Seems pretty simple. And yet, he asked the question. This is also a guy that didn't really want to believe that steroids did as much as they did. So why could I say one worked and the other didn't? Well, it's pretty obvious. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about the hormone response. Because the simple fact is that by and large, it's just not that relevant. Growth hormone response, definitely not relevant. The testosterone response might be. But by and large, the research... Well, the research is mixed. I've looked at a couple different studies on my website and... They typically, they do what, like one of them did, I think it was heavy leg presses and then arm work, and they did arm work and then heavy leg presses. And like one found that it didn't matter, one found that it did matter, but it was really complex. And like, but big picture doesn't seem to have a big effect. And there was a paper, uh, it was by Weston Phillips in, let's see, uh, 2012 titled Associations of Exercise-Induced Hormone Profiles and Gains in Strength and Hypertrophy, Large Cohort After Weight Training. They took un untrained men, which meh, untrained. And the long and the short of it is they found that growth hormone and cortisol explained 8% of the variance in growth. Testosterone had no relationship, which again tells you that this all kind of doesn't mean jack shit. Uh... When they looked at the high versus the low responders, the IGF response, insulin-like growth factor one, seems to, to explain some of the variance. But any variance that's explained was microscopic, 8%. The rest of the growth was explained by other things, not the hormonal response. So even if the hormonal response is relevant, it, it explains a tiny amount of growth. Because factually, growth is local. Growth is, muscle growth is a local response to tension, fatigue, 
maybe muscle damage, but probably not. Unless you're talking about jacking up hormone levels chronically, super physiologically, that's not relevant. Now, what is relevant is the local hormonal response. And I want to say uh, early 2000s was the discovery of what they called mechano growth factor, MGF, which was an IGF-1 isoform found in muscle. And I still think they missed the trick. They should have called it muscle growth factor or massive growth factor or motherfucking huge growth factor rather than mechano growth factor. They didn't ask me. And its response, what it responds to, it's tension overload because that's what stimulates growth. So that local hormonal response is probably relevant. Stenic hormone response, meh. At most, a very, very small amount of the growth response can be explained by that. And this is why I said it was a red herring that led people down a really bad path because anything, if you're adjusting your training to get a magical hormonal response, rather than focusing on what matters, tension, fatigue, some maybe damage, long-term progression, you've missed the point of the, the exercise. Ha ha. Those are more important. Any hormonal response, microscopic approaching, nothing. And to put this in perspective, a uh, recent review just came out. It's called Endogenous Transient Doping. Physical Exercise Acutely Increases Testosterone Levels. And it's a hilarious title because what they found, they looked at 48 studies across 126 trials. And the increase in testosterone amounted to 29 nanograms per deciliter. And you need to realize that the normal range for men is 300 to 900, and some will go even higher than that. 29 nanograms per deciliter. So at most, somewhere between 3 and 10% increase for no more than 30 minutes. Now, when you take even low-dose anabolic steroids, you can reach double or triple testosterone levels with even relatively low doses. Right? If someone is hypogonadal, has a testosterone below 300 and they go on hormone replacement, 150 milligrams a week, that will raise their levels by about 200 nanograms per deciliter all the time. And higher doses raise it even higher. 29 nanograms per deciliter for 30 minutes. whoop de doo Doesn't matter. It's not relevant. It's not important. The hormonal response to training has little to no role in any of this because it's too small for too short a period of time to do anything except give researchers something to do to stay off the board. Now, watch me backpedal. Because people will still note, and people again for decades said, oh, you know, squats make people big. And you will find many people that squat who are overall big. Now again, you'll find a lot of guys with big upper bodies that have terrible legs who only train chest and arms and get a big chest and arms. And that alone should tell you that it's local. So, but why? Why this correlation? How come guys that squat hard tend to be big all over? Well, it's real simple. Guys that squat hard do everything hard. Guys who bench and arm, train arms hard, don't necessarily train legs hard or at all. So it doesn't go both directions. But you find somebody who puts the time into heavy squats and heavy deadlifts, they're training everything hard. And the reason everything gets big is because they're training everything hard. Squats and the deadlifts are correlational. They have no causal effect on growth. I would also note, right, squats work more than just the legs. Works the upper back. You're having to shoulder the bar. Works your low back, having to stay upright. Doesn't do much for the, the, the you know, chest shoulder so much. It's not, and deadlifts even more so. Deadlift works not only the lower body, but also the back in, in its entirety. So even if you want to argue that squats are having an all-over growth response, it's because they're training a lot of muscles in the body. It's got nothing to do with a systemic hormonal response whatsoever. So like I said, if there's a reason that guys who squat heavy are big all over, it's because you don't find guys that train legs heavy that don't train everything heavy and progressively and intensely. It's the training everything progressively intensely that makes you big. And I would go so far as to argue, if you only want a big upper body, don't train your legs. Because any energy you put into your leg training is energy you're not putting into your upper body. 
And you can disagree with me all you want, but all you have to do is look at specialists. Bench specialists <clears throat> bench more than guys that train all three lifts. Hell, if you want to disprove this to yourself, go look at the physiques of uh, like paraplegic athletes. Hell, paraplegic wheelchair athletes have upper bodies that most bodybuilders would kill for. Specialists always beat guys that have to train across multiple events. For the guys that just want a big upper body and big chest and arms, and just train your chest and arms, don't put any energy into legs because it's energy taking away from what matters to you. You want to get big all over? Train all over. Whether you squat or not has nothing to do with it. If you want big legs, you need to pick an exercise that lets you train your legs effectively. So two more comments. Years ago, my mentor and I debate, discussed this. Because like I said, the problem with concluding that squats generate all over growth is very few routines are just squatting. <clears throat> if you take your average kid and go, okay, I'm going to give you a routine that's heavy squats followed by heavy bench row, shoulder press, and arms, and go, the squats generated the growth, well, that's bullshit. The routine generated the growth. And my mentor had, had seen the guys that only squatted that their arms got bigger. Ha-ha! Lyle's wrong as usual. Well, no. When you squat, what holds the bar? Your arms. And they are working pretty intensely. And I would personally argue that you are getting a local training effect in the arms simply holding the bar. Oh, I already addressed the second comment, which was just to piss everyone off. If all you want is a big upper body, just train your upper body and don't train your legs. Because there's nothing magic about squats that makes you big. Guys who squat heavy train everything heavy. There is no or little to no truth to this idea that the systemic hormonal response to training has any major effect on growth. If it does, it's small, and I would say it's almost irrelevant. So that one study, it's growth hormone and cortisol that showed the relationship. Testosterone had no relationship. We know testosterone is anabolic. Growth hormone by itself doesn't do much. And cortisol, well, it's involved in muscle remodeling. But growth? Hmm. I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, there will be links to the relevant papers in the video notes as usual. And uh, I'm sure the comments will be hilarious on this because they always are.